So these are all batteries that we've scanned. And typically you are going to assume that because you have so many of these things in your devices, cars, computers, what have you, that they're all working perfectly. But you might be surprised to know that when you actually scan this, you do see a lot of sort of pockets that form. A big part of the issue we're trying to solve right now is how do we improve the quality of manufactured cells? And we do this by sort of offering insight into what goes on within this center component of the cell. Hey, Jeannie, who's our guest on the show today? Today we have Todd Jensen from Titan. Hey, Todd. Hey, how's it going? So what is Titan and what do you do? Right now, my discipline is uh, battery acoustics. We use ultrasound to measure various states of batteries and offer sort of predictions, which are hopefully an improvement over current methodologies. So what does the ultrasound test for or what does it tell you? So basically, we can use ultrasound to measure any sort of material discontinuities in the cells. The easy way to think about it is a cell should have sort of a uniform picture. An easy way to sort of imagine this is if you were to go for sort of a sonogram and, you know, if you're pregnant, you want to see your new child, you'll get a, you know, a series of images, black lines, dark spots, light spots. And in a similar way, we use the same way to diagnose batteries. But rather than seeing a kid, what we can see are sort of non-homogeneities, whether it's a wrinkle in a separator, delamination, or sort of overlapping of the layers, or a tear. We can see poor electrolyte filling or sort of uh, dry zones where you don't really have enough penetration. And it turns out that that area just becomes sort of inactive when the cell is used. A quick editor's note on battery composition. Batteries are a collection of one or more cells whose chemical reactions create a flow of electrons in a circuit. All batteries are made up of three basic components, an anode, the negative side, a cathode, the positive side, and some kind of electrolyte a substance that chemically reacts with the anode and cathode. During manufacture, folds, tears, or other defects to the materials, such as localized electrolyte drying, can cause batteries to malfunction, have lower than expected capacity, or not function at all. And with that, back to the show. Can you show us examples of these things? Yep, so these are all batteries that we've scanned. And typically, you are going to assume that because you have so many of these things in your devices, cars, computers, what have you, that they're all working perfectly. But you might be surprised to know that when you actually scan this, you do see a lot of sort of pockets that form. Now, a big part of the issue we're trying to solve right now is how do we improve the quality of manufactured cells? And we do this by sort of offering insight into what goes on within the, you know, this center component of the cell. Typically, we have measurements sort of like an OCV or resistance measurements, and they offer some insight. You know, maybe you have a self-discharge test or a slight aging test to figure out what's going on, but they sometimes don't catch the problems within these cells, and sometimes it's too late. And what Titan has been able to do is show that, you know what, we can use ultrasound to offer sort of this introspection of the cell. And one of our, our very you know, happy moments was in the very early stages of our development, we were actually able to detect a tear in a cell. If you're looking at this image directly on the left, you're gonna see this small little pinprick on the bottom right of the grayscale image. That was about a two millimeter tear that had gone through the QC process for a company we were working with. You know, No one saw it. And we scanned it with our ultrasound system and we saw this massive sort of void appearing in our images. And we're like, we don't really know what's going on. And we had to send it to a CT scan for sort of a ground truth to sort of see what's actually going on. How do we pair our image to what's going on? And we saw a tear and like, boom, that's validation for what we're doing here. And so you can extrapolate this beyond further is that, you know, in the image to the right, you see this void appearing again, this big sort of purplish spot. That turned out to be a wrinkle that then caused sort of a cascading effect in the surrounding region, sort of hampering the performance of the cell, you know, causing sort of reduced capacity or role. And this was uh, pretty cool stuff. And so now we've been expanding our portfolio of cells we've been able to scan, proving our capabilities. And this is what we're looking at now is sort of this is what we presented in the International Battery Seminar in Orlando. And we can go forward. We can see a bit more interesting stuff going on. And if I take it one step further, and this is one of our more interesting aspects is, is that when you charge and discharge a battery, you are expecting that all areas of the cell are active. We have ions flowing in and out of the separator from cathode to anode and vice versa. What we're able to show is that you're actually not having the same flow of ions throughout the entirety of the cell. And what this results in is a lower capacity or potentially a higher capacity in some cells. 
you have this concept of grading cells when they're coming off a production line. In those cases, you're trying to match batteries with similar performances, but you don't really know what the capacity is because you have to sort of cycle them, which is quite an intensive process. So with our technology, we're able to sort of say, you know what, you are starting to see sort of these poor saturation zones, which could lead to a lower capacity over time, which is one of our big highlights. So it'd be helpful to know whether the batteries coming off the line are performing as expected or you know, can have problems in the future. Can you test existing batteries? Yes, we can. Part of our components here was testing the second life capacity of some of these cells. And Nissan Leaf is a great example. You have a number of these modules coming off in Nissan Leaf. They've been in use for eight years, 10 years, what have you. And they might have lost you know, 20% of its capacity over time. And in cars, that's not really usable. You have this whole energy density component you need to you know, weigh in is you know, how much power are we getting out versus what is the actual weight of itself. But for you know, home energy systems, that's not really a big deal. Space isn't that big of a requirement. And so in those cases, we want to say, okay, we can extend the life of this cell by you know, giving it a second chance. But the trick there is you then need to pair similar batteries with one another. You, know, you don't want to put a battery with say, 80% capacity with another battery that has 70% capacity. The management systems that have to operate those batteries together will typically just say, all right, all the batteries have 70%. What we can do is we can circumvent this whole cycling step to say, okay, rather than spending you know, 48 to 72 hours to figure out what the capacity of a cell is, we can offer a measurement in seconds. And that allows people to go, okay, we're going to vet all these new cells that come out of, say, a Nissan Leaf, and we're going to bin them into different sort of categories, whether it's throw away and recycle, or you maybe want to put into this ESS system, these types of cells. So it offers a much more efficient second life grading system. So what would happen to those Leaf batteries before Titan's diagnostic technology came around? Well, typically they would just recycle them. You could take sort of the capital investment to cycle them. You know, cyclers are really, really expensive, heavy, and take up a good amount of floor space as well as amount of power. And so typically, they just recycle the cells because it's more cost effective just to recapture the money from the materials being sold out. Hopefully, we have the solution for that, though. So who would use your business? Who would hire you? And how would it change their way of doing business? So if we were looking at the quality inspection side, so right off the manufacturing line, you're looking at all the cell manufacturers. And what it would look like is you have an end of line. You've manufactured all these cells and you want to know are there any defects in these. And we offer sort of a uh, sort of a liability tool in this case is that we offer a bit more traceability for the quality of the good. But also what we do offer is sort of inline steps, inline inspections. So maybe after the first formation stage, you put it through our system and we can either you know, pass these cells on to the next step or reject them. Ultimately, it's trying to make the manufacturing process more efficient over time. You know, for some of these manufacturers, you're hovering between 70% in some of the worst cases in efficiency up to maybe, you know, 85% with highlights being in the upper 80s. You know, you're very happy about that. You compare that to other industries and they're looking at like 99% or even better. It's pretty bad. But the challenge there is, though, is that this is a very, very complex multi-stage process with a series of failure points. Titan is trying to lighten the load in that case. And so with our tool, you know, we're offering sort of a new measurement system to offer more insights to process engineers to improve their systems and to speed up the prototyping of these new lines. And so that's one component. The second component I alluded to earlier was sort of the second life measurement system is we offer end users to repurpose cells from cars, ESS systems, or whatever applications for a second life. It's a rapid measurement tool to tell them, hey, this is a good battery or it's not. It improves the recycling economy in that case. And I touched on a little bit, but there's also sort of this capacity measurement component where you want to be able to say with more accuracy what the actual capacity of your cell is. And the easiest way to think about that is if you've noticed your phone going from you know 20% to 5%. So pretty much what's going on there is your phone in some cases is measuring sort of a voltage value. And the voltage curves for a cell typically have a nice steady state, you know, in between its sort of normal values. But when you get to the end, you have either a major jump or decrease in voltages. That in turn is pretty much what is shifting that capacity from 28% to 5%. Since Titan's system doesn't necessarily use voltage at all, we're measuring sort of the material change of the battery. An easy way to think about it is it stiffens. As lithium ions flow into the anode, it goes into the graphite structure. That whole layer 
now become significantly more stiff. And a fun way to measure this or see it in real life, I will not advocate that this is a good idea though, is taking a fully charged cell and trying to bend it. Not safe, I will admit we did it in a safe lab with a few wood, but if you take a fully discharged cell, it is now much more pliable. And that was one of my first sort of duties when I joined Titan was actually seeing this in real life. I was like, okay. I mean, the, the acoustics made sense to me from sort of a physics standpoint, but seeing, you know, in actuality that, you know, you could bend this at a low discharge state versus this very stiff material at a high charge state was really interesting. So using this technology for a given amount of materials and effort and cost, we can have more usable batteries, more useful life from those batteries, and more useful capacity of those batteries during their useful life. Yes. One of our goals is we want to reduce sort of the price per kilowatt hour. We can do that by just having a more efficient process. On the other side, you know, we could extend the life by then again offering a more, you know, efficient recycling component here as well. That allows, again, the second life. And then the measurement, whether we augment a current BMS system with our ultrasound technology or we sort of we go our own way with only ultrasound. We're offering, you know, sort of a whole new way to measure batteries sort of at a cost effective and space effective component as well. Because, I mean, when you think about cell phones, computers, this is where we start to roll out these sort of these micro machine transducers. You know, very, very small, very thin. You're looking at millimeters thick. And we can slot those right into those. It's a pretty cool technology. So it sounds like you're working with a big range of sizes of batteries. Yes. So I work with batteries from three millimeters thick up to 50 millimeters thick. Each of those requires a different way of uh, interrogating it with ultrasound. But the core approach, you know, stays the same. You emit an ultrasound wave into the cell and we measure it on the other side and we make deductions based off of what signal we're seeing on the other end. It sounds exciting and ever-changing. Thank you for being here today. I've learned a lot. It's really exciting to hear what you're working on. Always willing to share. Take care. Bye-bye.